Uh, hi, I'm Andrew Pranger and I'm a painter. I work traditionally um, in a sort of a classical um, realism style, uh, mostly using sort of uh, light and dark, uh, quite, quite harsh lighting. I'm, I'm a figurative painter generally and I like to light my, my figures with uh, quite bright light so that there's like a play of, uh, of the figure going back into darkness quite often. Why base your work mainly on figuration? Well, um, the figure development of my work is only sort of um, entered into my, my art uh, within the past year or so. Before, before this year I, I, I mostly uh, did objects, uh, not quite still lives, but um, just uh, singular objects in sort of darkish backgrounds, similar to the way I do my, my figures, but I, I never really painted um, people, uh, portraiture or anything. I, I never really dabbled with that much, uh, so I thought this year I would um, give it a go, and I think I've had varying levels of, of success with it. Um, what, what for you makes a successful painting? I always sort of judge it based on whether the, the final result uh, sort of is, is close to my initial idea really because when I before I start painting I typically have a, an idea in my head I mean it doesn't have to be I'm not trying to get the exact idea but you know if I if I can kind of come close I think I think with with any artist it's always uh, that desire to to sort of you know go further and push it further and, and I think you know if you can come, at, you know, as close as you can to your ideal of perfection, that'll push you on. And, and the next time, hopefully, you know, taking what you've learned from the past, you'll, you'll get even closer. So I think my, a painting of mine would be considered a success if, if I if I feel that I've sort of achieved or learned something from along the way from starting it, uh, and if it's close to what I wanted. So for you, is painting an education? Yeah, it's, it's um, you know, I, I suppose as a, as a painter you're always sort of, you know, you, you learn from everything you do, you, even if you've done the exact same thing before. I think, I think, I, you know, no one's ever really told me how to paint. Uh, I haven't been classically trained or anything, so I, I'm trying to sort of teach as I, or learn as I go along and teach myself, um, just a anything really, because I've got no one to really sit down and say this is how it, how it should be done. Um, and I suppose, it, you know, that it may take me a little longer to get where I want to go that way. But you know, so far you know, that's been it's, it's worked out. Uh, I. Well, it's, it's, yeah, a solid, yeah, it's, just, it's a solitary thing. It's, yeah. It's, I. Especially, you, especially the way that the course is here. We we basically were left to our own devices and and. Uh, for the most part, and to create work, um, and we, we bounce ideas, techniques, uh, other artists off of our of our peers that we work with every day. So I suppose you know I I learn from trial and error, but also uh, largely from fellow painters on the course. You know, looking at their work, seeing how they problem solve. I think painting is 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 mostly problem solving. You know, you you start off with a blank canvas and and you know you have to figure out how to, to turn you know what is what is basically cloth and wood into into something that means something to you and hopefully means something to other people uh, that that is the biggest problem I think we all face I mean I, I, sh I sure I think about it every time I it's, pick it's up a start, brush starting with a blank canvas yeah it's, it's plastic it's starting at at the bottom, yeah, you've, got to, you've got to build and, 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 you know, irrespective of, of, of style or subject matter, I, I think the one universal thing that all painters uh, have in common is that blank canvas and, and where it comes down to the learning process is, is how you go from blank canvas to finished painting and uh, that, that is where you learn the most, I, I, that's where I've learned the most. How important for you is craft? It, it's, it's hugely important. I mean, I, this is something I've always um, prided myself on, is, is always trying to, 
you know have the best craftsmanship I can. I think I think with my style in particular, because it is such a traditional style, I think the way that the work is is rendered and pre presented to the world uh, is is hugely important. Um, I, I often build sort of frames for my paintings, not not traditional like gold sided or, frames, or but there. yeah, it, it's more just a sort of um, raw wood. Uh, box that I place my paintings because um, my paintings are almost always uh, earth tony um, and, I, and I feel it just sort of cleans up and, and actually makes the paintings into objects um, which are you know to use the term like highly polished which is literal and figurative in that case but they, I, and I think you know using the best materials taking you know time and, and thought into to marks before making them uh, for my work personally, uh, is is hugely important. So, you're aiming to create something that exists in its own right without anything else. It's yeah, got a, it's got a frame, it's got a presence, it's got a place on the wall. Yeah, I mean, ideally, I'd like you know, if if it was in a gallery situation, I'd like it to stand on its own, um, with without the, the need for the viewer to necessarily have any sort of preconceived uh, you know, understanding of what it's about. And then you look at it on the wall and it, it, it's, you know, it's a painting, it's an image, it, it's a sculpture in a way. Um, you know, it, that, that is sort of the ideal for me, is, you know, not just the image, but the, the paint and, and you know, the actual physicality of it. Um, is always quite important to me. Generally speaking now, there's, I think, art falls into two kind of fields. Things that you can approach with no prior knowledge yeah. and kind of still enjoy. And things that you can do that with, but to thoroughly enjoy, sure. you have to have some sort of art yeah. historical... And I mean, I, I suppose, I suppose you know, that is as valid as, as anything else, but um, I, I know I generally appreciate a piece of art um, when I can have a personal you know understanding and experience with it um, I don't necessarily like being told what it's about as well it's very um, stale in a sense, yeah it? It, it also it also it kind of you know painting is you know for lack of a better term a visual art form, I mean, you know, that, that can also be debated, but to me it's a very visual art form. Um, and, I, you know, I would like to think that my paintings speak for themselves and without any sort of um, need for being told what, what they're about. And I think half the fun, because I think painting is fun, I think half the fun is, is not knowing and then people viewing the work and trying to decipher not necessarily the meaning but you know how it's meant to be read what 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 it what you're actually looking at um, because I do work quite representationally so you can actually see um, you know the quite obviously figures but what but what the figures are going through uh, you know how they they sit in the space um, I don't really want people to know I don't want to tell people I want it, them to ask and it perhaps comes down to how you view your relationship with art yeah. and how you want to see it which is strange though, I think, because the, the art that I like is, is so very based on preconceived stories. And we, but the, the funny thing is, is I, I don't necessarily know the stories. My favourite paintings, I don't, most of them, I, I, I'm aware that they're you know, either a biblical story or a, a Greek story or something along those lines, but I, I couldn't tell you uh, where, you know, a lot of times I couldn't tell you the, the, you know, what else happened, what the end of the story was, who wrote it, when it was written. But I can appreciate, um, you know, image-wise, composition, colour, and, you know, with a minimal knowledge that I think one picks up just simply, you know, throughout life, I think one generally has a good enough understanding of most things to be able to view a piece of art and then make their own assumptions, their own conclusions about what it represents. Um, and I often, yeah, again, I, sometimes I find it quite, not pretentious, but annoying when, when people feel that they need to have like a written statement that you must read before viewing the art. 
I mean, if that, if, you know, I'm not trying to put any art down, but I'm just, you know, I, I feel that it should speak for itself.